Thursday, February 9. Moses in Egypt. The character of Moses dominated the early years of sacred history. He was kept alive in the providence of God who worked through an enterprising mother and a caring sister. When Pharaoh's daughter found baby Moses in the ark of bulrushes, she asked his Hebrew mother to care for him and paid her to do so. What a blessed challenge for a young mother who was in exile and slave. Jochebed had only twelve years to teach her child to pray, to trust and honour God, and shape his character for a life of service. For years Moses was trained in the royal courts of Egypt. And Moses, it says in Acts 7.22, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. As Moses matured as a man, he made a conscious decision that changed his life and the course of history. Read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 to 29. Think about what Moses left behind and what he had to face instead. Try to look at it from his position before he made the choice. What was he leaving and what was he choosing to accept by leaving? Hebrews 11, beginning at verse 24. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Egypt was one of the greatest powers in the ancient world at the time, if not the greatest. The Nile River created such fertile land that Egypt, flush with crops, was a wealthy and powerful nation and Moses himself would have been at the top of this kingdom. It's hard to imagine how tempting the lure of the world, the world of Egypt and all its treasures, must have been to him in his early years. Surely he must have found the adoration, the pleasures and the riches tempting. No doubt he probably very easily could have justified staying rather than throwing in his lot with a bunch of despised slaves. And yet what? As scripture says, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Hebrews 11.25 And talk about afflictions. A major part of the book of Exodus deals with the struggles and trials of Moses who even after all he went through, was still not able to cross over to the promised land, as we read in Numbers 20 and verse 12. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Yet, in the end, we all know that Moses made the right choice even if at times he must have wondered himself if he really had. And so to finish the day, from a worldly perspective, Moses should have stayed in Egypt. However, as Christians, we have been given a view of reality that takes us way beyond this world. When we are tempted by the world, how can we keep the big picture always before us? Why is it so important that we do so? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember... God is always faithful. And here is a disclaimer. Contents of these lessons are not intended to be financial advice, but is general commentary based on biblical principles. 
The reader is encouraged to seek competent professional advice which will suit their particular personal situation.